Hi guys, this is Arnav from uh, Coding Blocks and uh, today we're going to talk about uh, a really interesting thing in Java that is uh, how to introduce uh, a delay into your program and how to do it the correct way. So uh, let's say you're creating a program in Java and you want to uh, introduce some delay for something. Say uh, the user clicks on a certain button and you want uh, say a pop-up to come up but you want the pop-up to come not immediately but like after two seconds. So what's the correct way to add such a delay into your program? Now, um, let's uh, take a look at our code here, which is, uh, say I want to write a Java program that prints hello, and then it waits for 10 seconds, and then it prints wait is old, okay. So first of all, we're gonna take a look at a, uh, you know, trivial approach, something that comes to our mind in the beginning is that we can do something like this. We can do, you know, uh, say uh, we print hello first, and then we, um, create something like long uh, start equal to uh, system dot uh, current time milliseconds which gives me the current time in milliseconds right now and I run a while loop which uh, does is system dot current time milliseconds uh, minus uh, start is less than um, 10,000 uh -huh. and uh, then uh, we just make an empty while loop and then we write uh, wait is over okay so let's just see uh, how this uh, pans out for us so if I run this code you'll see that uh, hello gets printed and then uh, the system waits for uh, 10 seconds and after 10 seconds are over it's uh, going to print uh, wait is over okay um, yeah. Yeah, so it's an empty while loop. Um, while, while this achieves what we wanted to do, there's a problem here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start the activity monitor, which uh, if you're running uh, Windows, it would be, uh, I, don't, I don't know, like uh, task manager or on Linux, it would be something like task manager, something as well. Now, if you look at CPU usage and I just order everything by the amount of uh, CPU time that all of these uh, processes are taking. So if the CPU time being taken is uh, one hundred uh, percent, it means one of the CPU cores is getting completely used. Now, as you can see, uh, OBS, which is the program that uh, I'm using to record this video, that is taking like two CPU cores. And that's fine because it's doing video rendering out there, right? Uh, now, as soon as I uh, run this code uh, again, so it says hello, and while it's waiting, you will see that this Java process is taking 100% CPU usage, which means my Java process is keeping one CPU core completely busy while it's waiting, okay? Um, so, of course, it's not a good solution because if you are running this on a uh, on a single core machine, then it would actually stop your entire machine from doing anything else. Now, these days we don't run single core uh, laptops or desktops anymore, but anyway, uh, completely blocking out uh, one of the CPUs is not a good thing and why is it happening because uh, when this while loop is executing for 10 seconds the Thread on which our program is getting executed is continuously running this while loop It has nothing else to do. It's continuously doing that and this thread cannot get free because as soon as the while loop I mean there is no body here, but as soon as the while loop uh, body gets executed it just evaluates this condition again and it just keeps doing it till this becomes false so this is not a good way to do that but uh, what else we can do is uh, we want the same thing to happen so uh, just to remove this part of the code and now we'll do something is we'll create a new timer okay so this is a better way to introduce a delay into your program without uh, making uh, java hold a single cpu core for the continuous time so what we'll do is we'll create a timer uh, timer uh, equal to new Timer. So, you're creating a new timer. Make sure that you're using java.util.timer, which is the, uh, the there, there is a WebKit timer and there is a Java X management timer. We don't want that. We want the java.util.timer. Okay. And then what we'll do is we'll do timer.schedule, uh, which uh, allows us to schedule a timer task. And we'll do a new timer task uh, out here. And uh, we will add a you know I'll just say so yeah 
So we'll add a new timer task which contains the um, uh, you know run method inside that and inside delay we will add 10,000 as the amount of delay and inside this run method we will add um, this system dot out dot quintal and wait is over okay so now if I run this program uh, let's just see what happens so I have like let me just shift all of this code out a few at the bottom of the code yeah okay so let's take a look what are we doing we printing hello first and after we print hello we uh, start uh, create a timer and on the timer we schedule a uh, the timer task and the timer task that we have scheduled it uh, has a run method inside that uh, and this run method uh, prints wait is over and we have scheduled this timer task to run after 10,000 milliseconds okay um, this is the schedule function what does it do it uh, schedules the specified task for execution after the specified delay that's what the schedule method does so uh, let's run this uh, and we see hello getting printed here we see the system is waiting and after waiting for 10 seconds we will see that it uh, prints away uh, is over okay um, now if i uh, take a look at my activity monitor again and i'll just run this code once more and I take a look at my activity monitor you see uh, you know Java is not there uh, anywhere in the top uh, tasks like it's not taking uh, even 1% of CPU usage so we are able to reduce a delay of 10 seconds without uh, making Java completely engage a single CPU core and if you have like eight CPU cores, then that's fine. But you know, if you're running on a dual core system, then that's gonna be a problem if you do it using this earlier method. Uh, we have a problem here is that after running wait is over, my, uh, my, my Java process is not yet ended. My task is still running. So uh, what I need to do here is to be able to exit from this task is I need to call timer.cancel after the run method has been called. So I will do timer.cancel. When I write timer.cancel because I'm using it inside an inner class, I have to make this final. So uh, let's just stop this code and let's run it again. And this time it prints hello. And after it prints hello, it's uh, gonna wait for 10 seconds. And after waiting for 10 seconds, it's gonna print. Wait is over. And when it does print, wait is over. You will see that the code, uh, the Java file execution also completes uh, immediately at the same point of time because we have called timer.cancel. So the ideal way to introduce a delay of 10 seconds into your program is to create a timer and you schedule a timer task inside that and write whatever you wanted to do after the delay inside the run method and make sure you cancel the timer after it has been called, okay?